Masechet Pesachim, Daf 98, and Be'ezrat uh, Hashem will be able to complete the ninth Perek today. Uh, so we, been, we begin with the case where someone chooses an animal, but that's, it's not an appropriate animal for Korban Pesach. The Korban Pesach has to be a male uh, sheep or goat, not a female. So if someone takes a female, uh, so it can't be used for a Korban Pesach. What's he going to do? Also has to be less than one year old. So let's say he designates an animal that's two years old. So then it can't be used as a korban. So that animal is rejected. And so it has to graze until it gets a blemish and then it will be sold and the money will be used to buy shalamim. This is an interesting case because you might have thought that, okay, although the animal cannot be used as a Pesach, it can be used as a shalamim. Um, it was never really rejected because um, it was never appropriate to be a korban Pesach in the first place. So the chidush of this Mishnah is, even though at the very moment that I designated it, it's, it's, there's no possibility that it could be a Koran Pesach. Nevertheless, we treat it as well, something that was could have been Koran Pesach and was rejected, and therefore may never be sacrificed, even, not even for a Shalamim. Instead, we have, to, uh, we have to sell it and use the money for Shalamim. Okay. Mafrish Pischov Amet. Uh, someone designates a Korban Pesach and then that person sadly dies before he gets a chance to slaughter the Korban. So now, uh, what, is the, what happens to it? Let's say he was the only one that was, uh, that was with it, uh, that was in the group. So the son cannot bring it afterwards as a Pesach, but can bring it as a shelamim. The Gemara will discuss when exactly did he die? Was the son part of the group or not part of the group? All that will make a difference. Good. Amar Huna Bered Rav Yoshua Shema Mina Telat. From the first halacha, uh, we can learn three things about the picking an animal that was a female. Shema Mina Bale Chaim Nidchin. First of all, we learned that an animal, even a live animal, can be rejected. You might have thought perhaps only an animal that was already slaughtered, and then something goes wrong, that's called rejected. And this is a machloket in Yoma. Uh, but here we see, even though the animal's alive, walking around, uh, but it's not the right fit, so then it becomes rejected. It cannot be, it cannot be used for any korban ever. And we learn second that, um, if, that even though it could never be a korban Pesach, even from the first instant, because it's female or it's two years old, Nevertheless, that's still, that's still considered a rejection and uh, again, can never be used. And we also learned that um, something will be rejected uh, if it's, um, even if the, uh, the Kiddushah is only for the monetary value, because really this Korban, this, that would be a, a Nekeva or two years old, since it can never be a Korban Pesach, doesn't really get the full consecration, um, but rather only its worth. Nevertheless, that animal cannot be used. Okay, so these are the three things we learned. Each of them are, are controversial in other places, uh, but, uh, but uh, here we, uh, can si we can see that this Mishnah sides with one, one, one side of, the, of these controversies. Okay, now, Hamafrish Pischa. Uh, we have a Baraita that expands on the law of the Mishnah of what happens when the father dies. Right, someone designates an animal and he dies. If the son was joined with the group, right, together with the father, then okay, too bad the father died, but the son he can still he right he can still bring it. So then that's no problem, and he'll bring it as a Pesach. And it would be the uh, same as uh, if there was 10 people in a group and one person died, you know, we uh, say it for him, but we continue uh, to offer the Pesach with Adam. However, let's say that father, he was the only person that was in the group that was designated with that Korban Pesach, then that it cannot no longer be brought as a, as a Korban Pesach, but rather can be brought on the 16th, Meaning the right the second day of Pesach as a shelamim. Uh, okay, there's a general rule that if you have a korban, you can never leave a korban Pesach with no owners. Uh, you, you can switch owners, right? Maybe it's mine, and then you join, then you leave. Someone else joins. That's okay. But if it has at any point in time has no owners, 
uh, then it's no good. And that would be, that seems to be the case here that uh, the father dies and there's no owners, even if the son goes and claims it later, no, it cannot be a Korban Pesach. Uh, so now that's the Braita. Uh, first question, well done, why you have to wait till the second day of the holiday? How about on Yom Tov, on the 15th, on Yom Tov itself? Why can't you make a Shalomim that day? This follows the opinion that voluntary offerings should not be offered on Yom Tov. You can violate Yom Tov for other things uh, and, and cooking too, uh, but not for a, a, uh, an animal that you could bring any time and it's only voluntary. Okay, now question. When did the father die? Before or after the, uh, the uh, noon? If it's before noon, so that's before the obligation of Korban Pesach started, kicked in. In the Braita, he said that the son, um, if he is joined with the father, then he can bring it as a Korban Pesach. But how could he do that? The son is going to be an Onen. And although we learned that an Onen, someone can bring a Pesach on his behalf, because by the nighttime, he no longer will be onen midoraita. In this case, he's the only one that's, that's designated with the Koban Pesach. He was him and his father. The father died. He's going to be onen. So he can't bring it during the day. So how could you, how could you say that um, if it's before noon, then the son brings it as Pesach, right? That can work if he dies after noon. If he dies in the afternoon, he could bring it as a Pesach Shini. But if he dies before noon, then he would be onen and would no be good. It would not be good. That's question number one. Okay, so maybe the whole Baraita is talking about someone that died after chasot. Then if the in the in the second case when the son is not joined together with the father, so the father was the only owner and he died after chasot. At that point, it was already, the obligation already kicked in. So now it was fit to be a Korban Pesach. He was about to slaughter it. Unfortunately, the father died. And now there's nobody else that's with it. And so now it's called a rejected Korban. So a rejected Korban cannot be brought as a Shelamim. It has to go out and graze, uh, right? So once it's after, if it was bef- if he died before Chatzot, then it was never, it never, it was never fit to be a Korban Pesach. So then you could say, fine, it was uh, ownerless, um, but it was before Chatzot, so then it will be a Shelamim, but uh, not in this case. So that's the problem. I'm going to show the outline here. We saw the three implications from the first case, and now here's, here's the question. We're going to have five answers to it. The question is, we had, the Braita had two cases, A and B. Well, A said, if the Shun joins, it can be a Pesach. If the son does not join, that's a shelamim, that's case B. But we assume that both of these cases have to be talking about the same time period. Either the father died before chatzot or after chatzot. But um, the first case, when the son is part of the group, then that would be a problem if the father died before noon because he's the only on end. So how could he bring it as a korban Pesach? And if he did not join, and you said it's a shelamim. So then, if it's, that's a problem, if the father dies afternoon, because then that's a rejected korban. So either way, we're going to have a problem. So the first answer is going to assume that it's actually talking about before noon. The second answer of Abaye is going to split the difference and say, yeah, A is afternoon, B is before noon. Right? They're not talking about the same case. It's a little difficult to read it that way, but okay, possible. And the last three cases are all going to assume that both of them are on the afternoon. And uh, in, that, in that way, we're going to have to somehow explain B, uh, why, this, why, it's, why it's okay to bring as a shalamim. Okay, so let's see the five answers. Oh, when it says that he has to bring it in the first case, it doesn't mean bring it as a Pesach Rishon, but rather as a Pesach Sheni. So in this case, the son joined, and it was in fact before the father died before noon. So he's an onen. Okay, it's true, an onen cannot bring Koran Pesach, but there's nothing wrong with the animal. So he will wait till Pesach Shani and bring it then. Okay, uh, so that's one answer. So he adds in that on the other factor that if the 
father died but after Chatzot and the son is joined together, then it can be a Korban Pesach. But that would only be true if he died after Chatzot. If he died before Chatzot and the son is not with him, then he brings a Shelamim. So those are the two cases that the Braita cites, that though both of those are true. And it doesn't talk about those two other cases. If he dies after midday and the son is not registered with, with him, then in fact it would graze because it was uh, became uh, ownerless. Um, and, and, uh, and it was after noon, so it was uh, appropriate to be a, a Korban Pesach and there was no one to bring it. So then that's a rejected Korban and that has to graze. And if the father dies before midday, and the son is registered with him, well, in that case, it can bring it as a Pesach Sheni, right? He'll be on end, but it would be okay. So in other words, he's agreeing with, right, Rava, just that he doesn't think the Braita is talking about that case. And now- Rabbi, could, could, he, yeah. could he just, um, let's say it's before Chatzot, could he just include somebody else in the Korban with him and then partake after? All after... Oh, right, that's a good point. If he is part of it himself, Right, and then he brings uh, someone else uh, to, to to join in, and you say, "Do it on my behalf." I suppose that would work. Yeah, I don't see I don't see why not. That's a good point. Rav uh, but this this baraita didn't talk, didn't say that case. Rav Sherevya Amar Leolam Demit Leachar Chatzot. He says, "No, all the cases, the whole baraita is talking about when the father died after Chatzot." But the father was already on his deathbed at midday. And so, because it was already expected that he was going to die, um, so we don't consider, uh, in B, we don't consider that this is a rejected uh, korban because, uh, he, because he, was already, uh, he was already about to die. Um, and so it was, you know, it was obvious that he would not be able to bring this korban. And so therefore, it can be, in fact, used as a shelamim later on. Rav Asheh says, In fact, he died after Chatzot. Um, and we're talking about a case where the son did not join. And so now you say, well, it's an ownerless korban, and uh, it's fit to be, to be brought as a korban, so it should be nidche, never be brought again. But this could be the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. He says elsewhere that um, about something that's alive is not doesn't get that status of something that's permanently deferred. Right? But only if it's already slaughtered. Not slaughtered yet, you can always bring it back. So this is goes against one of the three assumptions that we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, so according to this, they did not designate the animal before Chatzot, but rather after Chatzot. So since it was not even designated until after Chatzot, and the father died after Chatzot, and so, so the, the midday is the, was the, the determining factor to decide its status. But at midday, it was not yet consecrated as a Korban Pesach, and so therefore, that it was never actually designated to be rejected. It was kind of re designated and rejected within the same time period, so it never kicked in, in the first place. All right, and now we get to the second um, uh, Mishnah, which is about when a Pesach mixes with other types. Uh, let's say you had like three animals. One is a Korban Pesach, one is a Chatat, one is an Asham, and now they all look the same. They're all, you know, the same type of animal. They got mixed up. And we don't know which, which, which is which. So, you know, if these were kosher and unkosher hot dogs, you could say batel, but you can't say anything like that here because it's not about kosher and unkosher. I, 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 I promised to bring one as a designated one as a Pesach, Asham. So I have to bring it, I have to bring something. So now I can't bring any of them. They all have to, be, have to graze until they get a blemish because the, 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 the process for how you prepare Koban Pesach is different from Asham, is different from Chatat. So I, I can't do, do any of them. Uh, and then I sell them. And so then after I sell them, and with the proceeds, I have to buy three of the most expensive. So let's say I had three animals and you know one was worth 100, 200, and the other one was 300. 
And, but I don't know which animal is which. So I have to assume that the best animal might have been a Korban Pesach. So I have to buy a $300 animal for Korban Pesach. And, but that might have been a Chatat. So I have to buy a $300 animal for Chatat. So now, in other words, the sale of all the three animals is not going to cover the amount that I have to spend because I have to buy three of the most expensive type of animals. So then that means I have to um, make up the difference from my own house, meaning from my own, uh, my, my own uh, wallet. And so then, then I'll bring those three korbanot as replacements. However, if it got mixed up, my korban pesach got mixed up with a bechor, with a firstborn animal, the process of the firstborn animal is very similar, similar enough to korban pesach. Um, and so therefore, uh, it can be brought, I can, I can bring them, just, I can actually offer them. Uh, and if, if it was uh, the whole group of people that was part of the Korban Pesach, uh, then they can all eat it. Because what do you do with the Bechor? You give it to the Kohanim and the Kohanim eat it. What happens with Korban Pesach? Also, the owners eat it. So if the owners were Kohanim, then they can uh, give both, even if they're mixed together, they offer both in the same way, and the Kohanim will eat both of them. That's the Mishnah. Question, although there's a lot of similarities and overlap between Pesach and Bechor, there is a difference, which is that uh, uh, Pesach has to be in only at night. Uh, they'll have to finish the whole thing, whereas Bechor you can eat during the day, the night, and the next day. And so now if you're bringing both of, of these animals as Pesach, you're going to have to uh, have the stringency of both and now eat both of them, or all, of the, all of it during the night. Uh, and if you don't, then you might bring something and cause it to be pasul. So you're taking something that could have been eaten an extra day and now limiting it. And isn't that a problem? Oh, we can follow the opinion of Rabbi Shimon because he's okay with that. He's okay that with uh, limiting it, especially in this case where you really don't have a choice. Uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, you know, otherwise you have to just get, you know, have to uh, get rid of them, sell them. So, and we have a Mishnah where you have uh, two different animals, a Sham and a Shalamim. And yet Rabbi Shimon says, so you can uh, slaughter both of them in the north and that's okay for both of them. And you eat them in the, with the, the, with the most strictest rules of both of them. Even though Asham is much stricter, has to be in the courtyard, has to be in only for a shorter time and um, only for Kohanim. So, but uh, and Shalamim is the opposite of all those things. Nevertheless, he thinks that it's okay to do it together, even though you're limiting uh, the Shalamim, that would have been okay. The sages, the majority said, no, you can't do that. Okay, but we can follow the Bishimon for this. And according to the rabbis, what, what, what would he say? We, you, you gave me the opinion of Bishimon, but how about everybody else? Uh, so Rabbi explains that for the rabbis, you would wait until it gets a mum, and then you'd bring in its stead a, a nice big animal, uh, and you'll say, wherever, wherever the Pesach is, I don't know which one it is, um, so let that, that uh, designation apply to this instead, and you'll eat it as a Bechor Ba'al Mum. A Bechor Ba'al Mum also goes to the Kohanim, and uh, so since uh, this one this one has a mum, so the Kohanim will eat it as a Bechor. Okay, next Mishnah. Chabura she'abad pischa v'amru le'echad. This is very interesting. It's a long Mishnah. Uh, there's only very little Gemara on it. This is the last Mishnah, and it brings some like uh, fascinating logical puzzles. Okay, well, let's keep them straight, and uh, it should be fun. Chabura she'abad pischa v'amru le'echad. You have a group of uh, five people, right? And they lost their Korban Pesach. Okay, now what should they do? So they go tell one person, go and find it, right? Maybe it's somewhere in the forest over there. Go and look for the lamb. Um, and if you find it, have us in mind, right? If you find it, take it straight to the Bet HaMikdash, do Shechita on our behalf. And so we, we will join you. And sure enough, that one person goes in the forest, he finds the lamb, and he does shechita. In the meantime, 
They didn't hear back from him. They didn't have cell phones. So they didn't know if he uh, found it or not. So they went because they're afraid. What if he doesn't find it? Then we're going to have no korban. So they went and got another korban and they also did shechita. So now these four people, right, are designated with two different korbanot. What do they do? If the one person that went to look for it, if his was slaughtered first, and they said, they told him, we want to join you. Then, then both the finder and the other four people eat together with the original korban, the one that was now, was now found, because that was slaughtered first, and they joined in with it. If it turns out that theirs, the one that they brought was, was, was they did Shechita first. So those four people join, are, are, they have their own Korban. And that one person that went looking for it, so he didn't join with the other four people, with the one that they brought first. So the one that he found and he did Shechita, he eats himself. And so now they, everyone has a solution. Um, okay. Let's say now, you know, they're all together and say, well, what, what, you know, which one was first? They don't know. They don't, they didn't record the exact time. And so it's not clear which one was first. Or oh, it was the exact same time, right? There were a lot of people uh, doing shechita at the exact same time. The one person that went to look for it, he eats his own because in any case, he was never going to join with the one that the four people said. He never, he didn't tell them, I want to join with you. He went to look for the original Korban. He found it. He slaughtered it. So he's totally fine and he can eat that one. But those people, since it's not, we're not sure because we don't know which one was first. So it's not clear. Did they join the one person that was found? Or is their Korban Pesach the one that they made themselves? So since we don't know which one it is, one of them is one of them they joined, one of them they did not join. So that means one of them they can eat, one of them they cannot eat. Since they don't know which one it is, so they have to burn the one that they made themselves because there might be nobody that uh, that has actually joined to that. Maybe there might be a total, a total korban pasul. You don't have to burn the one that the one person found because that one person, for sure, they can't eat it, but maybe they joined it. And nevertheless, Peturim Milas or Pesach Sheni, those four people do not have to do Pesach Sheni because one way or another, they did fulfill the mitzvah of, of Korban Pesach. They just can't eat either one because they don't know which one it is. That's case number one. Case number two is the opposite. Amar lahen imecharti hatu alai. What they five people have a korban pesach. It gets lost. It goes out into the forest. So they send one person. You know, go and look for it. The guy that goes and looks for it says he's worried. He says, I don't know if I'm going to find it. If I if I delay and I don't come back in time, then you get a, another animal and have me in mind. I'll join your korban. Halach umasa He went into the forest. Sure enough, he found it and he did shechita himself. In the meantime, they didn't hear back from him. So they went and did their own korban, but they had him in mind because they told him to. If the one from the four people was, they did shechita first, so they can eat theirs and he eats with them also, right? If they, they join up later in the Bet HaMikdash or back in their house and they realize that the one of the four was done first, so that is the, is the only kosher Pesach and that one person joins in with them. And uh, the one that he made yes, gets burnt, it was nothing. If that one person, his was brought first, so that's good for him. He for sure designated that, but they did not join with him because, um, because they made, uh, made their own. And uh, they never told him, we're going to join with you. In fact, he said, I'm going to join. He said he's going to join with the majority. So therefore, theirs that they, they make, even though it's second, is fine, and they eat it. So basically, they're separated. If we don't know, or if they were at the same time, they eat theirs, that's for sure, because they, they made it, and they never said 
that they were going to join with the single guy. But the single person, he has a problem because he doesn't know which one was first. And he told them, do it for me. But he also did his own. And so since we don't know which one is first, one of them is kosher for him. One of them, one of them he joined, one of them he didn't join. So one he can eat, one he can't eat. Since he doesn't know, he can't eat either of them. The one that he made might have no owners. So that has to go and uh, be burnt. But one way or another, he did join a korban, either the one that he made or the one that they made. Therefore, he does not have to do Pesach Sheni. Okay, now we're going to do the other combinations of both of these stories. They both told each other to join. So again, five people, they lost their korban Pesach. One of them goes out to look for it. The four say, if you find it, then we want to be with your korban. And he says, if I don't come back soon, then I want, then you get another, uh, uh, another korban and I want to join with you. So they both told each other that they want to join. Well, that might look like it uh, should be better. Let's see what happens. Okay, if they know which one was, was sacrificed first, then they all eat from whichever was sacrificed first because they all said that we're going to join together no matter what. So the first one um, is, uh, is, is a Korban Pesach. The second one is ownerless. It's nothing. But now if they don't know, then nobody can eat either. We know one of them is a good Korban Pesach for everyone. One of them is not a good Korban Pesach, has no one. So, so they can't eat either one because we don't know which it is. But one of them, one or the other, is a good is a good Korban Pesach for everyone. Therefore, they do not have to do. No one has to do Pesach Sheni. And the last possibility, Lo Amar Lehen Velo Amaru Lo. They didn't tell each other anything. He just it was, they lost the animal. They say you go and look for it. And that's it. They didn't say have me in mind. You have me in mind. So if they didn't say anything, they are not responsible for each other. Basically, it means they split up. The one that went to look for the one, right? And he found one, he found it. So that'll be his. And the other four, if they did, uh, if they went and found another one, good. And then that, that'll be theirs. But they, they cannot eat from each other's in any case. That's a simple case. All right, good. Now, um, the, a, different, a different possibility. We didn't lose the animal, but, we, but we're not, we got mixed up with another. So we have two groups, right? Let's say there's five people here and five people in the other group. And now they both have lamb A and lamb B. But now the lambs are playing together and now we can't distinguish. We don't remember, did you designate this one or did I de designate this one? So what should we do? So what you have is the five people that were in the one group stand on this side and the five people on the group stand on the other side and they randomly choose one animal and take it to their sides. So now they're, they're, uh, they're holding on to one animal. They're just not 50-50 chance if that's the right one or if it's the wrong one. Now here's what they do. One of the people in this group will go to the other side, and one of the people that was in that group will go to the other side, like a Red Robin game. And then this is what they will tell the other person that came from the other group. If this animal that we have in front of us is in fact our Pesach, the majority, then you will withdraw your uh, participation from the other animal and you will join ours. And if, the, uh, if this animal was actually yours, it was originally your group, then we withdraw ourselves from the other animal and we will join you with this animal here. And that way, we fulfill the problem of we don't want an animal to be ownerless at any time. What you see further, this is what the Talmud is going to conclude, is that you want one of the original owners to always be there in the Korban Pesach, right? So if you have, you know, five people and it changes hand, changes hand, and by the end, not one of the original owners is part of it, well, then that it's a machloket. And so that would be a problem. By doing, by doing this, you ensure that uh, at least one of the own, or owners of the original will still be there and the other people can withdraw and join. And now, even though we forgot which one's which, by making this condition, uh, for sure, it will be the proper owner.
וכן חמש חבורות של חמישה חמישה ושל עשרה עשרה. You can do the same system, just expand it. Let's say you had five different groups of five people each, or ten groups of ten people each. And so then those uh, 10 groups, each have, they each have their own animal, 10 animals, and all the animals get mixed up with each other. And now we don't know who is who. What do you do? Uh, so we'll do is we'll take the 10 groups, they'll each stand uh, in a big circle, and they'll each randomly pick one animal. Then you'll take one person from the group A, send them to group B, one to group C, one to group D. And the same thing with group B, they'll send one person to group A, one to group C, right? So in the end you have um, a, complete, a, a, a group of 10 people with one person from each of all the, all, all the other groups. And then they'll make the same condition. If this animal was, uh, was yours, then they'll go to each person. If it was yours, then we all join you. If not, you withdraw and join us. And if it was yours, and so on and so forth. Okay, now last case is What if you only have two people that, uh, and uh, they're, they're individuals and they're, uh, they each had one lamb and now they got mixed up. See the problem now there's only two people all together. So there's nobody that could switch. You can't, you, you can't mix and match. So how are you going to know? So here's what you do. Each one of them goes out and finds someone in the street and say, hey, would you join my Koban Pesach? And the other one does this too. Okay, good. Now they have two people each. And now they can perform the thing as before, right? They'll join. So you have two original owners, right, for each. And now what well, they'll switch each one. If this is in fact mine, then you who just came over to my group, withdraw from yours and join with mine. Otherwise, um, I, will go, I will go to yours. Okay, um, so that's uh, all the fun cases. Now the Gemara will just analyze a little bit. Um, so if it both if both said, I'm, I'll join with you and you'll join with me, uh, then they join, then they eat from whichever one was first. Um, if they didn't say anything at all, then they're not responsible for, for each other. Okay, that's the same as what we saw in the Mishnah. So the rabbi has learned some musad from this, right? That uh, it's uh, uh, being quiet is always uh, is always a smart thing, uh, even for wise people, and all the more so for stupid people. Stupid people, whatever they say is stupid, so it's be better to be quiet. But even wise people should uh, should keep quiet. Um, as the Pasuk says in Mishneh, even a fool, when he holds his peace, is considered wise. Right? Someone's quiet, you think, oh, maybe they're having deep thoughts. And so everybody gives them the benefit of that of the doubt. Okay, what's the point here? Why do we learn it from here? Because in this case, see, if you don't say anything, then you're good. You found your animal, we'll do our animal, and we don't have to worry about which one was first and which one was second. Um, so then everything's okay. You might have a question on this. That's only if they, in fact, if that guy found it. Right? What if the person went to the forest and never found it? And now he didn't tell them to have him as in mind either. Now he's going to be without a Korban Pesach. Well, okay, at least he'll bring a Pesach Sheni, which uh, still might be better than if he, uh, if he now if he comes back and he doesn't know which one was which, and then they have to burn it and he can't eat anything at all. So um, sometimes it's just better to be quiet and let things go as uh, on their own. Okay, that's a good Musad. And now last, the last case that we brought when there's only one person each, um, and then they bring another person to switch. First, it seems that this is not the opinion of the Buda. What did Buda say? This is what I was referring to earlier. The Buddha says that, let's say you start off with 10 people, they all join this lamb. And then, and then it goes, one guy leaves, another guy leaves, and it keeps going down and down. 
that's okay as long as one of the original group is still there. So according to the Bihudai, you need one of the original group. Other people can come after. But if you have zero people of the first 10, even if other people joined and left and joined in the meantime, it's no good. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yosei Omer, Rabbi Yosei Omer, Rabbi Yosei Omer, Rabbi Yosei Omer, Rabbi Yosei Omer says, as long as there's someone joined in the Pesach, you can never have a point where there's zero people that own that are that are owners, because then then this does nothing, and even if someone comes and joins after, but it doesn't have to be one of the original owners. So at first sight, the last case, where we have one person and one person, looks like it follows Rabbi Yosei, because you have one person, and then they switch, so um, now you, it could be you have no one, no one of the original people because they each one just brought in another person, but that's no good, right? If I'm, if I'm alone and then I brought in, bring in a second person, that second person is not one of the founding members. And so now if, if we switch and I say, oh, that animal might be, the other animal might be mine. So now you have here the, um, at that point, uh, whoever, you know, whoever does the tonight first, it could be that only the person I just brought in from the street will be the only owner for that time period. And that would not be okay according to the Biuda. So you see, this seems to follow to prove the Biyose. No, no, we can explain the whole thing according to Biuda, because he said, Biuda is also of the opinion way before that you should not have a soul. You should, Kaban uh, Pesach should not have only one owner. It's not appropriate to be alone, right? You should have a group that makes it much nicer. You, have, you can't, first of all, you can't eat so much. And also it's no fun to have a meal alone. And so he said, you should not be alone. So Therefore, when the person originally designated the lamb, he had in mind that, of course, he's going to join someone else because you, you can't be alone, the only owner of the korban. So since it was already assumed that he would, he would join someone else, when he goes and gets that other person from the street, um, that person is considered a founding uh, owner as well. And so now you have really two founding owners, and uh, now they can switch, and it always ha- will always have a founding member. says, not only can it fit Rabbi Yehuda, the Mishnah fit, works better with Rabbi Yehuda. Right, in the case beforehand, the previous case in the Mishnah said, if you have five different groups and each, each lose their animal, then it only works if you have five people within each group. Why? Why do you need five people in each group? Why can not work with five, with five groups of four people each? And so, right, nevertheless, even though you have four people each, so you, you uh, divvy it up and you get someone else from the shuk and you can still make it work. So no, in that case, it would have to be for sure five because in that way, you have to have at least as many members in each group as you have the number of groups so that you can send one founding member to uh, assign to each of the animals. Then that way, no matter what the, the condition is, you'll always have one founding member in each group and that, in fact, proves the opinion of Rabbi Yudam. Not only do we complete the pedic, but we also complete the section of five pedakim that all have to do with the details of Korban Pesach. We, we, we said that this whole Masechet uh, 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 is split up into what they call Pesach Yishon, Pesach Shani. They're not about Pesach Yishon and Pesach Shani, uh, but rather um, that is called the first U- unit A and unit B. Unit A was the first four chapters and the last chapter, Arve Pesachim, that we're about to begin tomorrow. Baruch Adonai Amen Amen.